Hello, happy Wednesday. Uh, today we're gonna do the rapid fire book tag. I forgot what it was called. And by rapid fire, I really just mean hopefully not too long winded. <laughs> Let's just get started. I have questions on my phone. Question one is ebook or physical book? I vastly, vastly prefer physical books to ebooks just because I have like attention problems. And it just holding a physical book helps with that. And also, I feel like this is the answer that I give for like why I collect records also is because there's just like, when you get the physical book, you get like the artwork and everything and like the actual like physical thing and the cover. It's like a product, right? And you, you just, I know that like a lot of people would say, well, it's only the stuff that's inside that matters. It's only the information that I'm trying to get out of it. So like people that would prefer MP3s to records would say like, well, I, do, I only care about the music and that's fine, but I like a little visual aspect to go along with it. Number two, paperback or hardcover? <sighs> I like paperbacks but it's for a really stupid reason. Like I really like hardcovers as an item. Like I think that they're super nice and they just look really good and there's a lot of cool things you can do with like dust jackets and just as far as design goes, there's a lot you can do to make a hardcover look great. But they also tend to just be bigger and they're a little bit more cumbersome and this is where I might lose you. <laughs> I feel like when I'm in public and I'm reading in public, a paperback is less attention getting than a hardcover. So just for my own insecurity of wanting to be invisible when I'm outside, I like to have a paperback. <laughs> Number three is online or in-store buying. I do both, I do both a lot, but I really like going to used bookstores and like trading in books and having the actual physical book, like the instant gratification of it all. And also if I'm buying online, I'm also still buying used books and you don't always know like what the quality is gonna be. Like last month, was it? <laughs> I ordered a hardback and I got a paperback instead. So like that just doesn't happen when you shop in person. So I guess that's a reason why I would prefer in store. And also you're just supporting local businesses, which is good and nice. Number four, series or trilogies? I don't know, like I don't read really enough fiction to have a stance. I'm like looking at all of my show. I think if your story needs a whole series, then it should have a whole series. If your story only needs three books, then it, it should only need those three books. Do you know what I mean? Number five, heroes or villains? Again, I don't really read a lot of fiction. It's certainly not anything that like has a kind of hero villain set up, I guess. Number six is a book you want everyone to read. I think everyone in the entire world should read Grave Matters by Mark Harris because like, we're all gonna die. <laughs> like, that's just a, a fact. Like, it's the one thing you can absolutely be sure of is that you're gonna die. And so often people don't prepare for it. And then when you do die, all of your loved ones have to take care of your funeral arrangements. And that can be like a $10,000 impulse purchase because the funeral industry can be kind of fucked up. <laughs> and this book is just full of a bunch of great references and it walks you through all of these different methods for dealing with death care. I read it a few months before I got my crematory operator certification just because I wanted to make sure I was getting like a different perspective from the people that are like, you know, trying to sell people cremations. And then there's this statistic on the front that I really want to read to you because it's like stuff that I don't think people even think about. A typical 10 acre swatch of cemetery ground contains enough coffin wood to construct 40 houses, nearly 1,000 tons of casket steel. 20,000 tons of vault concrete and enough toxic embalming fluid to fill a backyard swimming pool. So yeah, I, I just, I, I really highly recommend this book. It's stuff that everyone should know about. And if you do get this, I really recommend looking for a new edition because it does contain resources that you can look into for stuff like green burial and home funerals. And I met a death midwife through this book. 
and she was really cool. So yeah, if you want to read this, it's not necessary that you get a new one, but if you want to look into the resources, you will probably want an updated version. <laughs> Number seven, recommend an underrated book. I don't know if I have any books that could really be considered underrated. Let me go look at my other shelf. <laughs> okay, we're going with the graphic novel for this one. And it's Serenity Rose. I've never seen anyone talk about Serenity Rose, but I love Serenity Rose so much. I had been reading it since I was 13. The artist, uh, Aaron Alexevich, I think is how you say his name, is one of my favorite comic book artists. Like, I love his art style so much. And I just, I, I cannot <laughs> recommend it enough. Like, if you like stories about witches, then like, read this. It's all about witches. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, re I really recommend it. It's about, it's a lesbian witch. It's a, it's a fun little tale about a lesbian witch. Like, how can you not? Number eight, the last book you finished. What was the last book I finished? I believe it was Ada's Algorithm by what's the author? James Essinger. And I talked about that in my wrap up for last month. Number nine, weirdest thing you've used as a bookmark. I pretty much just use those little sticky tabs as bookmarks, like exclusively. I've used like, I don't know, like receipts tags from clothing. <laughs> Number 10, used books, yes or no? Oh yes. <laughs> Number 11, top three favorite genres. I guess science, uh, contemporary, like adult contemporary, and like journalism, <laughs> maybe? <laughs> Number 12, borrow or buy? Buy. <laughs> Number 13, characters or plot? I think I'm more of a character guy. <laughs> Number 14 is long or short books. Books that are exactly as long as they need to be. <laughs> I don't know, I really appreciate some books that are really long though. Like I'm currently reading Warped Passages by Lisa Randall and it's this whole like exploration of physics and stuff. And I, I'm really thankful that it's a long book because it gives you like enough time to spend with the material that it kind of becomes familiar. Number 15, long or short chapters. I really like it when chapters are short because it gives you plenty of places to stop. And for me, I get bored reading because the actual act of reading is just really grating to me. And so having short chapters give me all of these opportunities to take a break and I, I appreciate that. Number 16, first three books you think of. Um, Cosmos, Packing for Mars, Most Wanted Particle. <laughs> Number 17, a book that made you laugh or cry. I keep mentioning this book <laughs> in every video but it's my favorite. A Little Life, it made me laugh, it made me cry. <laughs> Number 18, our world or fictional worlds? I mean, I'm assuming it means like, what do you prefer to read about? And uh, I like our world. Number 19, audiobooks or normal books? I've never used an audiobook. I feel like it would help maybe with attention, but I feel like there would be something lost with like reading comprehension. Because whenever a teacher would be reading a book out loud or whenever we'd be reading a book out loud in class in high school, I don't know, it, it's just, it goes in one ear and out the other. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't hold on to it. Number 20, do you ever judge a book by its cover? Sometimes. There's definitely some. There's definitely some that like I totally got because I love the cover. Like this one, like are you kidding me? Like I wasn't gonna buy this. <laughs> Number 21, book to movie or book to TV? I don't know, I think some books can really benefit from a great film adaptation because you don't need a lot to tell the story or at least the core story to capture the spirit of the book. Like Simon, Love Simon was a great great movie adaptation. But A Little Life, I heard like it's supposed to be getting like a TV adaptation and I think that is a much better choice than a film adaptation just because you'll be able to spend more time developing the story because there's a lot of like mundanity <laughs> in that book that I think, I don't know, it would be nice to be able to preserve a movie or TV show adaptation you prefer to its book. For this one, I'm gonna say Morris by E.M. Forster. And the film uh, is of the same name, Morris. It's from 1987, uh, directed and written by, written, I think the screenplay was also written by James Ivory, who wrote the screenplay for Call Me By Your Name, which I have not seen or read, but Morris? It is so good. Like it's such a wonderful film. Like every single scene is necessary and is also good and it just 
feels like the story is moving so well and there's so many plot points, one major plot point that I think it fixed so well from the book that I'm pretty sure most scholars even believe Forster didn't buy himself. It's just, it's really good. It's got great costume design. It's got amazing cinematography. It's got great set design and more repressed Edwardian hair stroking that you can shake a stick at. I, I really, I really like it. It's a good thing to see visually too because it's set in the Edwardian era. And so there's maybe some stuff if you're not super familiar with what the Edwardian era looks like. Um, this gives you like this whole visual world. <laughs> and the last one, is series or standalones. I mean, we love a good standalone. <laughs> Again, because I don't really read fiction that often. I guess though, like if I found a series that I really liked, I would enjoy that. <laughs> because I don't read fiction that often, because I'm so finicky about it, it's hard to tell what I'm gonna like. And so if there's a series, then I'll at least know like, okay, when the next book comes out, I know that's something I'm gonna wanna read. And it's a nice break in between reading like a lot of science books. Because <laughs> sometimes I do want a break from reading about science. So yeah, those were all the questions in the rapid fire book tag. I don't think that was very rapid fire at all, but I hope it was fun to watch and I hope you have a good day and I'll see you next week.